everybody. Welcome back, everybody. So here we are with the second session of our conferences for the hiphopcinefest.org. So we are very happy to welcome back to the event. And now we are organizing this conference in partnership with the Cartel of the Independent, that is an independent movement in Rome that is dedicated to the free divulgation of uh, movies and how to make movies and what is on the backstage to try to give uh, tips and skills to all the movie makers uh, community at various levels. So we really thank everybody that supported uh, to the creation of these uh, conferences, Elisabetta and Valentina and of course to our guests. So, before introducing them, we are going to tell what we are going to speak about. So, this conference is dedicated to how to pitch a movie. Why we wanted to do this panel? Because we think that the movie presentation and the movie packaging, let's call it like this, it's really important. And sometimes there are great ideas that people is not going to present properly. So that's why we decided to invite some experts that are going to tell us uh, how to make our project affordable and understandable to our buyers and public and whoever we are speaking to. So ready to take notes? Let me first introduce our incredible guests. Um, we have Andrea Traina. He is an Italian director and screenwriter who lives and works in Rome. He has written and di directed short films, commercials, features, films, and TV series. His works, aired on the main Italian broadcasters, have been selected by international festivals, never failing to win major awards. He collaborated with Sky Italia, Fox Crime, and Filmax. And as a screenwriter, he won the Premio Solinas, the most important and prestigious Italian award for sc screenwriting. Recently, he collaborated with Tipota Movie Company in the making of some documentaries, and he is a founding member and current lead member of the board of the Writers Guild Italia, the Screenwriters Union. Hello, Andrea, and welcome. Then we have Greta Nordio. Greta was born and raised in Venice, in Italy, and she is currently working as manager of business and legal affairs for Vivo Film, an award-winning independent production company based in Rome. She's also been working in the field of audience design for years, collaborating with Torino Film Lab in numerous projects, including the communication strategies of the multi-award-winning The Wound, a land imaging and La Nuit de Roi, and holding workshops in Turin, Sao Paulo, and Beirut throughout the world. She pursued a degree in English and Film Studies in Scotland and a Master in Film Studies at Columbia University, New York, where she lived for three years. In New York, she also worked for Film Presence, specializing in strategic outreach and crowdfunding campaigns for various films, including Citizen Four, National Gallery, and Miles Ahead, and the New York Film Festival. Welcome, Greta. It's a great pleasure to have you here. And also, even from afar, he recorded a, a video for us. We have uh, Bill Baring. Yes, Bill Baring. He's, uh, he's been for the last 20 years working with cinema in Greenland and Denmark. He's a self-taught projectionist and cinema manager in Greenland's only full-time cinema in Kapwak, Greenland Cultural, Cultural Center. Furthermore, he has worked as an artistic director and as technical advisor for Nuuk International Film Festival in Greenland for the last four years. His main area is with indigenous filmmakers in the Arctic. So, welcome to our guest, and uh, let's start uh, with Andrea. Hi to everybody. As you uh, heard, I am Andrea Traina. I am a screenwriter and a director. Uh, my English is good, but not perfect. So I, I try to, to speak slowly to, to try to explain uh, the better I, 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 I can uh, what I want to say about 
a perfect pitch or how you can make your pitch perfect both both uh, online or live since uh, the pandemic uh, 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 is something that changed a lot what the, the the way we we have to convey to uh, to speak about our ideas and not and and uh, as a uh, as they said i am also a member of the board of the writers guild italy and uh, we uh, we had uh, just a few days ago uh an event called blind net pitch is uh, a kind of uh, uh, pitch session for writers uh, with uh, producers. Um, we call it blind because the producers uh, had to choose uh, uh, the, 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 the script uh, they wanted to, to her uh, just by the idea without knowing the authors without knowing the writer who, who, who wrote that idea because we are convinced that the idea is the most important things uh, and so uh, we organized this, this this kind of event the event was totally online uh, through a um, nice platform um, called discord it's a, a platform used more for uh, role playing game or something like that but we use it for for pitching movies or series and uh, it, it was a, a very interesting experience but um, to enter uh, on the topic i prepared a series of slides so i'm trying to share my screen let me Okay. I hope you are viewing. Yes, we see everything. Thank you. My slide. Okay, perfect. As I say, make your pitch perfect. What is your pitch? A pitch is uh, a quick introduction to your project and to yourself. This is very important. The people you will be pitching to, producers, uh, financiers, distributors, are not simply looking for a good project to be part of. What will make you stand out from the crowd of projects project, is you. If you seem dumb, if you have a poor sense of humor, uh, or if you are some someone difficult to work with or behave unprofessionally it will all work against you a pitch is a a tiny piece of a larger professional relationship it is some uh, it's the first step for this larger professional relationship it is uh, like a, a door opening, allowing the other person to take a taste of what you have in store. And building on that a relationship of further meetings, contacts, phone calls, emails. It is even possible that the person who is impressed by your pitch is not the person with whom you will be working on that project. But they can put you in touch with the right people. The path to success is not a straight road. Absolutely not. Stay open to whatever opportunities come on your way. And your pitch is about your personality and a hook. What is a hook? 
Hahook is what makes your project unique. Perhaps it is a, a familiar narrative uh, structure that you have uh, added uh, an element uh, of novelty that makes it unusual and original. It is very important to allow the, interlocu the interlocutor to recognize a familiar premise, easily sellable, to which something special can be attached. In other words, it is well known that producers want the same thing, but different. It is very rare that they choose uh, to produce something uh, highly atypical and never seen, because the business the business risk would be too high. And above all, remember, less is more. The pitch should be short, concise, tattling. You don't need to communicate uh, to communicate every single detail about every single character or how brilliant the narrative structure or its subtext, subtext is. You need to tell just enough to capture the interlocutor's interest. What is the goal of a pitch? First of all, intrigue a professional industry contact. You are the best person to tell your project with confidence and enthusiasm. If you're not convinced yourself, why should anyone else be? Another main goal is develop interest. Limit yourself to providing the necessary and sufficient elements to intrigue the interlocutors. Three words. Essentially, you need to stimulate them to say the words, tell me more. What belongs to your pitch? Surely an introduction. Start by introducing yourself, emphasizing your experience, and what makes you a perfect candidate to become a business partner. Avoid pitting your entire resume. And surely a concise description of the project. Aim to be really concise and effective. You can capture the interlocutor's uh, interest um, at the point uh, he might even reply, I'll never make a movie like this, but I definitely want to read it. If he is fascinated, he will certainly know how to make the right connections for the project to happen. Again, the paths that can lead to success are endless. And a concise description of the project status. You are the creative people, but for those who are in, chair, in charge for the production side, it is absolutely necessary to know right away what stage of development the project is in. Treatment, first draft of the script, serious Bible, etc. Give your interlocutor the tools he needs to make his evaluations. Finally, address him clearly a call to action. That is, um, explain to him uh, what you expected him to do. An email exchange, a tweet, a drink, a meeting to schedule, or ask him to attend the screening of one of your previous works, exchange phone numbers so you can get him a link to a trailer of one of your films. Whatever it is, it's essential to try to obtain from the interlocutor an immediate action 
that will allow you to acquire content through which to keep the relationship alive over time and to establish a network of industry contacts. What doesn't belong to your pitch? The full character arc. The more detail you struggle to describe verbally, the more you risk losing the attention of your interlocutor. Every plot detail, as proud as you are of, of all those amazing twists and turns you have in, in uh, your plot, resist the urge to tell them all. Long expository speeches. Don't be monotonous. Change your pace and tone and voice often to keep your audience attention. Anything extra. Focus on what is essential and leave out everything else. How long should, be, should your pitch be? As I said, as short as possible. It is strictly recommended that you limit the duration of your pitch well below the time you have available under the rules of the events are you participating. If you show your pitcher that you have respected for his over valuable time, he or she will be grateful. Aim for three minutes. Three minutes is a long time. Add an extra minute to, to address any flow that led uh, you astray and use that time to get back on track, perhaps catching up on important elements you forgot to mention. And be sure to be clear and concise and don't worry about the clock. Stay focused and count on the content of your speech. The building blocks of pitching, as I said, first of all, confidence. This, is, this isn't just about your project. It is as to do prim primarily with yourself. If you think your project is unusual, provocative, out of the box, don't give the impression that you are apologizing for it. Instead, be confident and ready for any confrontation. Optimism. Many things can and often do go wrong, but it essentially is essential to maintain an optimistic attitude, to show yourself as a, a positive person with whom you enjoy working. Professionalism. Your interlocutor must make a big investment in your project and must be sure that his money is in good hands. Be professional and choose carefully what you want to say. Preparation. Do not improvise. Master your material. But without memorizing every word, you will need to be able to answer any, quest any questions. Make sure you have the right glossary and knowledge to carry the conversation on a shared professional language. Three-act structure, midpoint, character arc, etc. Empathy. Put yourself in the shoes of the person sitting across from you, both live or online. What excites you about the project may not excite anyone else. You are not dealing with a creative person, but with someone who is in the business of funding and producing content from, from which to make a profit. Beyond any socially useful subtext or philosophical approach, these people need to understand if it's financially attractive to found your ideas. Don't get lost in 
flights of fancy about the source of your dazzling inspiration. Before the pitch, prepare. Do not rehearse. Don't learn your lines. Now your stuff. Memorizing the thought, the content of your pitch can be fatal. Just lose, just lose focus for a moment, and uh, and you'll be off track. Unable to move forward. During the pitch, first of all, connect. Don't back. Try to establish a relationship. Your job is not to back someone to produce your film. Your goal is to establish a connection. If you don't capture their interest or the type of project isn't right, leave the conversation with a professional and positive attitude. You could always offer them something different in the future. This is very important. Discuss, don't audition. This will allow your interlocutor to learn a lot about you and you to learn a lot about your interlocutor. Don't get cut up in trying to impress them. Use the opportunity to gain important information about the person you are talking to. I don't know why we went back. Okay. During the pitch, be professional. In the, for, a, for a live pitch, this could be also have a fresh breath or a firm handshake for a online pitch, a fresh breath is not a must, uh, but you have to be on time, both live or online. Uh, for the online pitch, you have to check your device and connection before the pitch. You have to choose a comfort zone without distractions for you and for your interlocutors. Also, uh, the background is important. Be funny, but not dirty or controversial. Avoid gossip, religion, and politics. And if religion or politics are themes of your scripts, of your script, limit the conversation, the conversation to the script. Who are you pitching? Producers, and they want to work with professionals. Agents, and they work, they want to work with professionals. Investors, and they want to work with professionals. Directors, and they want to work with professionals. This is show business. You are making the show, but they are making the business. So, confidence, optimism, and professionalism. And remember very well, this is an industry of relationships, primarily of relationships. And the pitch is just one part of a larger conversation. In conclusion, making a show 
is extremely difficult and stressful. Be a team player. Better to have a decent script presented by a very good writer than the opposite. Because the point is, a uh, decent script, you can make better a decent script. You can make great a decent script. But if the person who is presenting that script is not so good, that is more difficult to change. So, set yourself apart. And that's the most important things. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Andrea. So, Thank you. Yeah, it was very clear, the presentation. And uh, uh, I just, before going ahead with the question of the public, we are going to finish the presentations. But uh, we wanted to ask you, uh, what you feel that was uh, so different from a, a live pitch and a digital version of, of a pitch? But the, the main difference is uh, actually that you who are uh, making the, the pitch, uh, since you are making the pitch uh, probably uh, directly from uh, your house, uh, are certainly in a more uh, comfort situation uh, and this is a pro and a con in <laughs> in uh, in uh, in a way because uh, it's your house so you are uh, um, in in, uh, in a very well known environment and you are quiet you are not to take uh, a bus a taxi or uh, your car to go to the appoint the, the appointment uh, place uh, so in uh, in um, from this point of view is uh, uh, the finally very um, uh, uh, it's more easy to to participate but also the fact that you are in uh, in your house uh, and you can really have uh, a real eye contact with your interlocutor uh, because you know maybe uh, you are watching the, 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 the image on the screen not not really uh, the lens uh, the, the camera on, on your laptop or, or whatever uh, it's not so simple to to gain uh, this connection uh, I, I was talking about, um, and uh, and also you have to to think also about uh, uh, connection problems because there are connection problems often. So maybe in the middle of uh, a, a very interesting uh, plotting point uh, of your script, uh, the connection uh, uh, pop up uh, and, and you <laughs> remain, uh, uh, you, 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 you got interrupted uh, by, this, uh, by this problem. Um, maybe if you are uh, presenting something you wrote with other uh, authors, every author is in a different house <laughs> connected with the same person. Or the producers are, you're talking about uh, are connected uh, from different places. Uh, so um, it's not so simple to understand also uh, when you you have to talk and when you have uh, to stay silent because someone else is talking um, maybe often uh, there is uh, some delay in the in the connection so you risk risk to uh, to talk uh, over s someone else so there are pro and um, and cons uh, in, uh, in, uh, in pitching uh, online 
uh, or live. The main things uh, I, I think, I repeat, is uh, uh, the possibility to to have this this pitch in uh, in, a, in a comfort place in the in the, mm -hmm. your uh, main comfort place. Thank you, thank you, Andrea. And uh, so now, uh, before going ahead, we are going to play the video that uh, Bill recorded for us. And that's why uh, we want to explain why we decided to ask to Bill that uh, he's targeting a very specific kind of uh, public and movies. Because um, in our festival, science, uh, we most of all have uh, hip hop movies. Science is an hip hop film festival, it's a very specific subject. So we want to try to explain to the public how to highlight the strength of a project that is such specific on a thematic. So please, to our director, let's play the video. Hi, my name is Bill Bering and... So, I've been working for the last 20 years as a, in, in the cinema industry, mainly as a cinema manager in Greenland, but for the last five years I've been artistic director at Nuuk International Film Festival that's based in my country. I've been in charge of uh, selecting films, so I every year I have to watch about five to eight hundred films uh, that has been sent into our festivals, so that's a lot of uh, hours watching films, after films, after films, but I do enjoy it. And last year uh, I opened, started my co uh, own company called Dutlut, that focuses as a sales agent and a consultant for indigenous films and film uh, makers on the international market, especially on the European market, because at the moment there is actually no indigenous uh, sales or indigenous uh, distribution companies that focus on this area and I want to do a change. That comes to what we are talking about today is actually how to sell in a film. So from my point of view as a sales and distribution and consultant uh, with focus on indigenous film is actually it says it's not easy to sell in the film. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of time. So the first thing I want to say is when you're making a film know your audience so what i mean about that is actually you have to remember when you're doing this film who are you going to show it for for example if we are doing a, a kid's cartoon and you're thinking about you want to sell that to uh, you want you focus on selling it to an uh, older audience that doesn't work because that's not the main group is kids that's what they want to see so Remember that when you're doing your film and you're going to do your planning on how you want to have your film for going out to cinemas, uh, festivals or even distribution. So if we are looking on the local area, uh, you should try to find a distribution company uh, in your country and see if they are interested in uh, obtaining your film. So before you do that, you have to make sure you have a poster or some kind of uh, poster, just something so they have some visual uh, aid to look at because that helps a lot. And then of course some stills from the film so they have something to, to know what, what is kind of the feeling of the film. And of course you have to have a synopsis for your film. That means you have to do a, a summary of your film in a way that tells the film but at the same time doesn't t tell the plot. So it's not easy. Um, uh, try to uh, run by some of your friends and family and so on to see the, the text before you do use that one. And of course, of, of, uh, of a trailer, because that helps a lot for uh, these uh, really busy people in the distribution area and when they have a lot. Uh, if you get a distribution, try to do, uh, do a, a deal that that fits you and uh, never ever take, uh, take the first offer. Have a talk to them and try to figure out a solution that works for them, but also for you. But you have to remember, if you're an up-and-coming film director or up-and-coming producer who has a film, uh, 
want to sell your film, you have to remember it. You will not get the best deal in the first because they they want to see if there's something there. But if you can't get it in distribution, and there there's not an option. There's of course trying to put it out yourself. That means you're contacting all the, dis the different cinemas in, in your country. But that will take a lot of time because you are individually contacting uh, contacting every cinema and asking them are they interesting in watching uh, screening this film in their cinema. Again, so you have to make sure you have a poster, you have some stills, you have the synopsis and a trailer. And the other thing you have to remember is if you're distributing your film yourself, you have to offer something extra. You can't not only give them their film because you need something to sweeten the pot. You could, for example, be present at the, uh, the screening. So you can introduce the film or and afterwards there will be a Q&A. That helps a lot because then you give an uh, emotional connection between the audience and the film and you. That is the most powerful thing, uh, thing that can actually happen because that's your best selling tool is actually yourself when you're doing it on your own. If we are talking about the uh, international market, you should focus on trying to get your film on festivals, uh, not only in your country, but also internationally. And here's the thing. If you're an up and coming, you can send it into the big festivals like Berlinale, like Cannes, Venice, Sundance, uh, Toronto and some film festivals on these places. But they are looking for something specific and they will mostly taking films that already has production companies uh, in line or big uh, big uh, film festival uh, film companies in, in their back so f try to find a festival that is a small uh, less more if we take my festival for example we are focused on in disney films so we are looking after films uh, from around the world that's in the edition it and that those films will often not get distribution in others, their own country or their own communities. So uh, we will actually look at them and see, okay, is this something we can use and we can look uh, work with? Because if their film gets selected on the festival, they will have a, 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 a official selection at New International Film Festival. And that helps a lot on the next place they want to uh, send in a film because if you already get selected uh, official selection at, at one festival it gets easier for the next ones because this is a selling tool that you actually have a film that got selected and if you actually get selected at a festival try to get there because that helps a lot to being part of it because again you're doing uh, introduction to the film you're doing Q&A's but after the film, you will actually be around other filmmakers and sales and distribution committees. So you have the opportunity to have a talk with them and say, like, oh, you're doing this and you want to have this film. And then there's a big chance you actually will find someone who's interested in putting in, in distribution. Uh, there will be a lot of talk. So you have to remember it's something you have to take your time on. And if you want to Another way to doing it is actually trying to sell your film, going to the different uh, film festivals on uh, the industrial part. That is uh, normally the film market where all the film professionals are getting together. Uh, Berlin does it, Cannes does it, and Venice does it, for example. And you can actually go get an accreditation to try to go into the film market and talking to the different uh, distribution companies, sales agents, and so on and so on. And that is not easy because you normally only have about 10 to 30 minutes to try to sell your film. So you have to be prepared that you will have a lot of meetings during uh, a day when you're there. And you're doing the same, same, same and, and again and again. But if it happens, they will contact you out after, after the festival because they will be busy talking not only to you, they will be busy talking about to 200 different people. So have some uh, patience when we are talking about it but but when you're still there you still should be going on to the next one trying to do your work and so on and so on so if you're doing this try to remember you have to take out uh, a year to a year and a half for the festival circus to going around and trying to get to the different festivals and trying to connect uh, connect with them 
and it's not easy but the main the main thing is actually as you as a director you as a producer or you as an artist artist doing this is actually focus on what you're best on and that is actually making films i know it's not easy going to festivals and talking and talking and talking and feel like nothing happens but it's unfortunately part of the uh, the film industry that is the the least uh, fun to do but hard work actually helps you do the the thing that would actually get your film sold or getting into distribution it's not something everybody want to do so if you're not interested in doing this you should uh, as a director or artist talk to your producer and say producer this is your job now and it's and something the producer knows they will have to do but it's not the fun thing they want to do because it's not always the funny thing to do so that is my uh, take on how to sell your film um, i hope it uh, gave you some a bit insight or uh, anything else but thank you so much for listening to me and i hope you you enjoyed it thank you Welcome back and thanks to Bill, uh, even from afar. And in the meanwhile, Andrea told us that uh, he wanted to add something to his uh, issues, so please. So, some. Okay, we are reloading. So, yeah. Anyway, just to introduce what is going to go ahead while uh, we are reconnecting. After Andrea's intervention, I'm going to add a little bit of tips and of course our experts, maybe they can tell us if we are right or not, because going to present your pitch also it means to prepare yourself to do the pitch. So we think that creating your project presentation is a great way to do a good analysis of the project, because sometimes there are a lot of good ideas around but are not well analyzed so we really think that try to make a kind of a benchmarking of your project is the base to go ahead so when you're going to analyze a movie your movie you have to start to study the cases that are similar to yours so you have to start to ask yourself which are the movies that have something in common to mine this can be an analysis that you do for yourself, but can also be a key of presentation to your interlocutor, because it's something that is going to claim his attention. If you are going to say that your movie is in a mood of some already well-known project, of course you have to be careful, because maybe it seems that you're going to aspire to something too big. So also in this kind of analysis, you have to be very, very careful. But um, when you're going to choose three, four, maximum five movies that can be your case study, it's really important to go deep in this kind of analysis, like analyzing the year of issue of the movie, the genre in which they are constricted, because sometimes the genre is something that constricts a movie, and the way in which the synopsis uh, has been written, the log line, the director's statement, the trailer, the poster of the movie. This is everything you need to analyze as a first base. And after this, what you have to go to analyze are the steps of the movie. So like uh, in which region of the world they have been distributed, to which sale agent, from which sale agent, and uh, how is the ranking on IMDb? and which were the festival they participate to and the award they won. Because if my movie or my project of movie is similar to this other case that I'm studying, probably I have some chances in these directions. So it's important to do for more than one movie this kind of analysis because it's something that is going to give you a wider screen of what you, you can uh, walk through or at least to have a perspective of the future. Also, what we really recommend is like, try to make a SWOT analysis. So you say, oh my God, they're always speaking about this <laughs> kind of uh, analysis, but sometimes it's really important to understand and ask yourself, yes, but which are the strengths of the weakness of my project? And put it on paper. 
because sometimes uh, we love so much our projects that we are confused of what uh, the people can perceive of it. So this is uh, super important. And so you try to analyze, analyze the internal strength and the weakness. So it can be like, I don't know, a strength. The director is very talented, but a weakness can be maybe is the first time or she's the first time director. Uh, another strength can be that you participate to international uh, workshop and labs, uh, but a weakness could be a lack of funding. So you start to put in balance your, the things that you have on the table. And also at the same time you have to analyze which are your opportunities and uh, your uh, threats. So uh, the, an opportunity can be the country of origin or the topic you're speaking about. A threat could be uh, the changes on the industry trend. So maybe you are speaking about something that at the moment is not like on top of the wave, or um, the subject matter uh, or the genre that maybe is something very very specific. So, but this can be a weakness, also can be a strength. So this is something that you have to know and analyze. And also now later on we are going to speak about audience design is the target. So to who is targeted this movie? And uh, which is my audience? So sometimes the urgency of making a project, uh, most of all in the independent project, is like, I need to make it, yes, but who is going to watch this movie and where? And now that the path of distribution are much more blended together, it's not just festival, theatrical, and after broadcasting, everything can be at the same time. <laughs> so, and most of all with the pandemic, we saw that everything is blending more, more, and more. So it's uh, really important to try to understand to who is directed this movie. And um, also, uh, we would like to highlight is like our project, uh, how we want to position our project. So also in a matter of uh, image. So as we said at the beginning, we analyzed some uh, movie that can be similar to us. Well, so our movie, which genre is, which kind of uh, image we want to give of it, try to make a poster sometimes is something that lets you analyze more how is your movie. So this is something that let you understand more about uh, the colors, uh, uh, the frame. Uh, sometimes it's just going too much further, and maybe you need to do a, a step back, but still helps you in the analysis of your project because you are going also to see which are uh, the key points. So I'm speaking about uh, human rights, politics, uh, about fashion, uh, spirituality, about what is uh, focusing the movie. And also when you're going maybe to choose a pitch, or a possible financer, you already are going to have a clear uh, range of people you want to direct to, because maybe if you're going to a financer that is just speaking about sport, of course you're not going to present a movie about human rights. Otherwise, maybe it's a movie that connects sports and human rights, because also I think it's important to try to make some jumps, you know, sometimes also looking for sponsor can be uh, something that try to make different, try to twist the market, is a, is a, a treat, we don't know, <laughs> but still can be. Maybe Andrea can comment more about this, it's is, is just, uh, is just an idea, but sometimes it works. So also uh, what we think is important to say is uh, give an emotional hook to who you are speaking with. Because if you try to connect uh, the people that is listening to you emotionally to your project, for sure, is going to be a point more. So now that we are back with our uh, audio and the video, our directors say that everything is okay. So we can give back the word uh, to Andrea. I jumped with my intervention in the meanwhile, so we covered the whole. So please, Andrea, tell us what you wanted to add more. Yes, I, I just wanted to, to say something more about uh, pros uh, on the um, pitching uh, uh, online uh, because I, and what I'm trying to say is, uh, is connected with what we are talking about because uh, 
that there was a time uh, when uh, you can uh, you could sell just your movie just with a log line uh, there are stories about that uh, the what what we call the elevator pitch uh, you are uh, I, we you are the occasion to to talk with a producer and you are able to say something that uh, immediately uh, intrigue the the producer with just a, a phrase with just a sentence uh, with just something like that but this is uh, uh, something that there's not so so true now because uh, uh, now you need a lot of other stuff your pitch is going to 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 be more visual than uh, in the past you have uh, as uh, we heard uh, you need to add uh, um, maybe a mood board a mood board is a, a tool uh, when you use a lot of uh, uh, frame from other movies or something like that to communicate uh, uh, the mood of your movie or the poster as uh, we said or uh, a trailer or a teaser or uh, a, a side still reel that is uh, a sort of trailer made up with the pieces of other movies uh, uh, used to to, to tell your story and uh, I often uh, um, make a joke about that saying that sooner or later the producers uh, will uh, ask us uh, to, 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 to see the, the finished movie uh, to, to, before saying if they are going to produce it but um, joke apart what I uh, wanted to say is that uh, uh, pitching online in some way uh, encourage to to use these uh, uh, more visual tools uh, during the pitching because you are your screen your computer screen you can share with your interlocutor so you can if you have uh, uh, moving images, if you have teaser, a teaser, if you have uh, um, a, a trailer, if you, have, if you have something like that, uh, is more simple to share with your interlocutor uh, what you have uh, in uh, visual terms uh, to show them. So, um, in, uh, in, this is another, uh, obviously, also in a, a, in a pitch. Uh, live you can have your laptop with you and show something but uh, in some way i think uh, that uh, if actually the, the the pitching is moving online uh, this will make uh, surely more um, uh, more than the than, than, than what what it is now, uh, uh, visual the the, the 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 movie pitching. I'm absolutely uh, sure of, of this. Thank you, thank you, Andrea. Yeah, I think this is also a, a good uh, step to think about. So now we want to give the word to Greta, that uh, she's going to tell us about the audience design. Thank you very much. Actually, uh, you have already said so many things that are really uh, an integral part of the process of audience design uh, that maybe I have very little to add. No, I'm joking, but um, it, it's a real privilege to talk uh, to a festival and to people who are very focused already on a certain topic and community um, because uh, it means that they are fostering um, a really a community of fans and people who are already interested in uh, what they want to say. So it's, it's a great skill and a great asset to already have uh, 
uh, someone um, to already have clear what you want to talk about and who do you want to talk to. Um, and also to have already a community of support that will um, help you in uh, making the film scene and also will probably be interested in what you want to say and with whom you can engage in, a, in an interesting conversation about your film or about the message you want to, to say. Um, so what, uh, I w what I wanted to say is to briefly introduce um, what audience design is and um, the various steps uh, that um, you can do to uh, start thinking about your audiences and your distribution strategy and your communication strategy as soon as you have a treatment or already a very uh, an idea for your film. Um, it is basically audience design is a method or rather I like it to call it more of a process or a way of thinking that um, allows you to start thinking about uh, marketing by putting the story and the message that you want to tell at the center and trying to understand who are the people who would be interested and who would um, love what you're talking about and by putting the by really understanding the um, how you can mess um, communicate this story to the right people, you can really understand a more. Uh, you can really understand how you can build a more efficient strategy to reach the audience that you actually want to reach, rather than maybe um, spending a lot of money or time focusing on the wrong audience or the or sending a message that is not in line with your film because uh, there are. I don't know if it ever happened to you, but the. To me, it already happened quite a lot with independent films that are marketed in a certain way that make, maybe makes them seem more commercial than they are, or maybe a, a genre that they are actually not, just because it's thought that this way they could be ma more mainstream and they could attract more audiences, but then um, this uh, communication strategy is actually a flop because it misses completely the audience that is right for that project. And, uh, and by end, the, the audiences that actually want to go, will go to see that movie uh, will not like it probably because it's not what it's marketed to be. And therefore it will not uh, start a word of mouth communication and you will not get the support from the audience and the love from the audience that probably you want to get. Um, so we talked a lot about, uh, for example, in how to make a pitch, uh, we talked a lot about, uh, you know, you have to know who you're speaking to. So when you're making a pitch, you have to know you're speaking with uh, professionals. So of course, how you tell a story to a professional and what you tell about your project to a professional is different to what you would tell like a normal uh, person you meet on the street, for example. And, um, and that is the key in um, trying to realize that you can communicate your project because uh, it depends on the project, but there are many pro projects who have many layers and uh, therefore they can connect to a lot of different people and a lot of different communities. And you can, but you have to communicate differently to all these communities and you have to be able to communicate uh, to to tell them about the different aspects of your film so that all these different communities would be able to get um, and to love what you want to say. So uh, the first element that is a key in when you're thinking about audience design is really understanding what are the core of your the cores or the core what is the core of your film and also what are the maybe the secondary topics the second uh, thing is really to understand what if there is a message you want to tell uh, with your story what kind of message it is uh, be really focused about this or if maybe you don't want to tell 
um, you don't have a message to say, but maybe there is a certain way you can you want to make audiences feel, or you want to make them think about something in particular, um, and this already informs may inform the script that you're writing. Uh, because if you start thinking about really what you want to communicate and uh, how you want to communicate, um, I hope it might help you uh, focus better on certain elements of your story uh, and of your directing uh, so that you're sure that these uh, elements actually come forward that are understandable to the audience. Um, once you've highlighted and you have clear uh, what your main topics and your secondary topics are and what is actually that you want to make the audience feel or understand or think about, then you already have something that from where you can understand who the audience is that could be interested in these uh, um, topics could be, for example, uh, it's very easy. It's easier to do it in documentaries, for example, because uh, if you're making a social issue documentary, maybe you already have uh, certain audiences that are the people who are parts of association organizations fighting for those social issues, um, who, who are your main natural audience. But for example, if that is a secondary topic in uh, your film, you can always tr understand they, they are a secondary audience for you and that maybe they are an audience you haven't talked about at the beginning. Um, because the um, beautiful thing about right now is that um, distribution schemes are not, um, as Elian Manuela, I think, was saying, um, are not, um, clear or are not um, a, desi a fixed structure anymore. And uh, different audiences uh, connect uh, mostly in communities that are already formed online and that can be reached really easily um, thanks to the online world we live in. So you can reach uh, people from all over the world and with so many different interests by just understanding where these people meet and uh, what uh, their their habits are and uh, therefore how you can reach them more efficiently. Um, so the other thing I really recommend is to research a lot your audiences uh, once you have an idea of, of whom your audiences might be and try to understand you know what they do in their everyday life, what they um, um, what kind of movies they watch, why they watch them, where they watch them, because uh, some audiences might just watch films online now, or some audiences might just want to watch films in the cinemas, and um, so on and so forth, so that you already are building like a strategic way of how your distribution should look like, uh, because it should... Uh, it should be based on your audience's habits rather than maybe what the market uh, is telling you would be more um, more profitable that maybe it's actually not. Uh, because uh, especially in distribution right now, a lot of uh, people are doing things, um, in Italy we say, uh, a bit automatically. So everything has been done in a certain way up, up until now. So we will keep doing uh, the, and repeating the same schemes over and over again. But the, same, the schemes might work for a certain film, but might not work for your film. Uh, so that's why I believe that researching the audience habits and um, really be focused about uh, who they are and what they do is a very great exercise that really helps you uh, to be to get the most out of your film's distribution. And then also, I think a very helpful thing that you should think about while in your building an audience design strategy or a co any communication or marketing strategies is really understanding what you want as a creator. Um, do you want to reach certain audiences? Do you not want to um, skip completely certain audiences? Instead, you're not interested in that. Do you want your film 
um, to because it depends also what point in, in your career you're at. So, for example, you, if you're a first-time director, maybe um, for you it's more important to um, go to a lot of different festivals um, because that way you will garner a, a good uh, curriculum and a good profile so that when you make your second film, uh, people would be more interested in it because they know you already have a, a very good record um, of support behind you. Or instead, if you're making a social issue film, maybe for you it's very important to show the film to the communities that you made the film about. Um, and maybe that is not profitable from a commercial point of view, but if for you it's important, then there are ways to reach out to the community and that those communities could actually uh, jumpstart a very interesting word of mouth publicity that uh, otherwise would have been skipped and therefore also be very good for the commercial future of your film. And uh, once you have the topics, the audiences, um, who these audiences are, what they do, how they watch films and so on, clear, and what your goals are, then you can build your distribution and community take, uh, um, um, distribution and communication strategy that makes sense for your story, your project, the audience that will be interested in, in that story and the goals that you want to reach. And if you are clear about this, you are really um, thinking very efficiently and um, you can reach, you can decide really what is the best path to, to distribute your film because there are millions of different paths of communication and distribution, uh, but because we have limited resources, uh, all of us working in independent cinema, thinking uh, both about budget and about timing issues, maybe it's best to focus on things that actually might really work um, rather than just um, push your film out and then, you know, without any net or of support. And especially one thing we, audience design really focuses on also is a start your communication uh, really early in your project um, because the longer you you are able to engage with the audiences, the bigger your communities of support will be so that when you're ready to actually make the, the work that you have built um, public, um, then you will already have a core audience that will support it no matter what, that will help uh, all the um, chain of distribution, so from distributors uh, to festivals to, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> to theaters. And uh, that usually that core audience is, uh, starts um, so-called snowball effect that uh, if they really love the project, they won't stop talking about it. They will get the word out. They will get their friends to see it. They will help you reach ways that you have not reached before. And uh, also, if you are engaging with your um, audience from an early start, maybe you will discover something about your film that you never thought about, because each, per each different persons bring different perspectives on what uh, they are seeing, so of course you must be true to to your vision and make the film that you want to see, uh, but it might be useful to learn what other people think about it and actually have a, a really uh, constructive um, conversation about uh, your project. Um, this is it. Uh, if you're more curious to know about audience design and uh, all the steps and also about some exercises like the SWOT um, that might be helpful to start to think differently about uh, how to market and communicate and distribute your film. You, if you go to the website of Torino Film Lab, there is a free book in PDF that you can download uh, that is completely dedicated to audience design and that's a very helpful to um, for you to start thinking differently or start thinking very early about the, 
the distribution that you want to have for your film. Thank you, Greta. And for sure, we are going to put in the description of the video also the link for the download because we think it's really helpful for our filmmakers. And for you, we have, in fact, a question that arrived and they say, there are any suggestions about how to participate to the grant of uh, Torino Film Lab? Uh, good question. I, I'm, I'm actually not part of the selection project, but I'm one of the consultants of the fund. So if you win the fund, you might win a consultancy with me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the suggestion for me would be to, to really to try to think outside the box uh, with the, how you can engage your audience and to really already come up with um, some good research on who your audiences might be and uh, what your goals are in terms of uh, distribution. Um, because um, it's, it's something that is not really so thought about and uh, the F audience design fund that the Torino Film Laos has is aimed for films that mostly are already uh, done um, or at least that's what we get most often. Um, uh, but if you already have a bit clear um, and you have done already a bit of research about who your audiences are, that will help uh, a lot in your application. Um, I don't know if I answered the question correctly, but uh, I hopefully, think so. yes. <laughs> and for Andrea, we have another question that is about uh, the mood board. So <clears throat> they say, how you think the best would be to present uh, the mood board? As I say, the mood board is a tool uh, to visualize your idea. So whatever you are, whatever you have, uh, uh, you want to use, uh, and whatever you, you, you think is useful to visualize uh, the mood, the plot, uh, and the tone, uh, uh, of uh, your idea is uh, is a good uh, thing to to use. Um, the famous uh, series uh, Stranger Things, uh, for example, they used the uh, frame f from uh, 80s movies uh, of the same genre, from Spielberg, from uh, other authors uh, of the age, and. Um, and that actually was uh, very effective uh, to to describe uh, in order to describe uh, the idea uh, of uh, the genre of uh, series uh, they had in mind um, so you can use uh, as i said frames you can use photos uh, you can use uh, whatever you 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 want to um, to communicate uh, not just uh, you know the the the, the situation uh, of your uh, of your script, but but really uh, the atmosphere, uh, the, the the look, uh, uh, the tone, uh, maybe also the the, the use of colors uh, you 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 think uh, to 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 make um, and the the style. Uh, of, of your uh, movie in terms of uh, cinematography uh, or, or something like that. Thank you. And we have another question for uh, Greta that is, if the movie is targeted only to an online public, uh, do you have some specific suggestion about the audience design? Uh, that actually is uh, perfect, I think, because you can be very creative and you already know exactly um, already that it's targeted to a, an online audience. Therefore, maybe it should be distributed online um, if you don't have any issues of uh, copyrights and so on. Um, and you can be very creative about trying to engage people online. It's a bit difficult because, uh, um, you know, online we get so many information all the time um, and, and it's a constant flux. 
uh, and we get so distracted. But if you really understand, you know, what kind of online communities you, your film is right for, um, there are a lot of very interested and very dedicated online communities online uh, that actually are um, very supportive of whatever interests them. Uh, so maybe first of all, you should be you should try to reach them, and secondly, you should uh, really focus uh, your time to build like the material materials that could work online and different kind of materials because uh, um, because we have so many information online coming at us all the time. You should have a very consistent communication strategy so that you get new materials out kind of constantly uh, throughout uh, your distribution process so that you catch the audience attention over and over because someday maybe they will want they will see one post and think oh that's interesting but I don't have time to actually read that um, and then they see something that catches their eye a second third fourth time then actually they might uh, people might actually check out what uh, this is about. So, of course, I suggest working with a very good social media manager um, and then uh, really understand if there are niche communities, uh, really core and supportive communities that you can tap into. And, um, you know, forums still exist, uh, dedicated websites still exist. If you work with a dedicated PR campaign that targeted exactly they, this, uh, you might have articles coming out and uh, people will start to hear about this, uh, your project very soon. Um, and then do a broader communication campaign that will keep people interested, keep keep uh, them interested for a long time, I think, online. It would work best. And also be very, but be very clear in all your posts and all your um articles or whatever that where they can reach that movie uh, because the other thing about online is that you lose information all the time so you have to be very clear and very specific that for example they can rent your movie there and you have a link in each post and that way you will um hopefully get people um get people attention in the short span attention that we have online. Thank you so much. And we have a last question. We were perfect with the timing and it's for Andrea. And uh, it says, you think the way in which uh, you dress can influence your uh, uh, pitch maker? The way you dress, uh, mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, the way you dress is actually your uh, poster, <laughs> you, your cover, I don't know what to say. So, uh, surely, if you are um, pitching, uh, I don't know, a script with a certain uh, theme uh, and, uh, and, and the way you look uh, is, not, um, uh, is, is not related to, to or is uh, the opposite of, of what about uh, the, the theme of, uh, of your script, uh, maybe it's not the, the, the right way to, to present your idea. Um, surely, uh, uh, the, the, the look is important. Uh, um, and, uh, and, 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 this is, and it's something uh, you need to, to, to care about. Um, but it, it isn't the only the only tool you can use. You, uh, I remember in a, in a live pitch, uh, once I used uh, um, a deck a deck of tarots uh, with very interesting uh, um, images in uh, in uh, in each card, and uh, I used. Uh, uh, to to pitch my story to 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 to, to pass through uh, the plot uh, of of my movie of my movie using uh, these tarots, also because uh, um, the cards uh, uh, were used in the script by one of the 
of the character, of, uh, the main character of the movie. So um, the more you 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 are able to uh, to to make your interlocutor enter in your movie, and remember, maybe or often or um, probably we can say always your movie is uh, your script is a way to build an entire world it is it, it is not true just for i don't know marvel movies or, or something like that every story is uh, is a, a world uh, a, a world making a world building so the more you are able to to make your interlocutor to understand to enter that world to to see that world to feel that world uh, also with the way you are you are dressed uh, this is very important to not not just to gain the attention but but really to to intrigue your your uh, uh, interlocutor to to make him uh, um, imagine what you really have uh, in mind because this is this old saying uh, that nobody knows anything uh, in the, in movie industry and and uh, unfortunately this is true nobody knows anything they try to to follow rules, to 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 make something uh, at no risk, uh, to follow a trend, uh, I don't know. But um, but very often uh, the the person that you are talking to uh, is not a creative, so it's not so simple. He can understand uh, what you really have in mind. It's not just a story, a plot. Uh, I repeat, it's a, it's an entire world. Also, if that world is very similar similar to our world, but it's a it's a world with uh, its own rules, uh, its uh, its own uh, style, its own tone, um, and it's important to convey. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the the way this world is made. Thank you so much. And so now, thank you to our guests, uh, Andrea and Greta, for being so much clarifying about this theme. And of course, there is the chance to rewatch online uh, this conference, and we are going to spread the link with these uh, precious suggestions. And now.